Hello, and welcome to Ontology Explained. I'm Casey Hart, philosopher and ontologist, and today, marketer. We talk a lot about artificial intelligence on this channel, what it is, what it isn't. Today, I'm not that interested in what artificial intelligence is, but rather, why do we call it artificial? What sort of baggage comes along with that term? Are there maybe some other terms that would do a better job? We'll consider a few like fake or counterfeit or synthetic. But before we look at those terms in detail, let's talk about the marketing and branding in general and see what kind of effects it can have. This goes back to a story from my childhood. I was up fishing in Alaska. We caught wild shrimp, which almost ruined all other shrimp for me because they were so delicious. You just can't get any fresher than that. And we caught crab. And one of the types of crab was the tanner crab. The people selling them realized it was a shame to call it a tanner crab, so they just called it a snow crab instead. The tanner crab, not particularly popular. The snow crab flies off the shelves. Another example, and this takes us back around the 2000s, talking about the inheritance tax versus the death tax versus the estate tax, and Frank Luntz's rise to prominence in the Republican Party when he did a bunch of focus groups and found that people in general are pretty much okay with an estate tax. That sounds like something that really wealthy people pay and wealthy people have lots of money. But if we call it the death tax, that sounds terrible. You shouldn't be taxed for dying. Everybody dies. And so this simple change, even if there were no policy changes whatsoever, made a radical difference in public perception and therefore support or uh, opposition to a given policy. Please don't get in the comments with debates about abortion. Right now, I just want to talk about the branding. And if you're pro-life versus pro-choice, those have radically different connotations, even though they're supposed to be just the different sides of the same coin, right? So are you in favor of more or less legalized abortion? Rather than saying pro-legalized abortion or anti-legalized abortion, we pick these pro-life or pro-choice labels because they resonate more with a particular audience. Both of them sounds more positive. And the last example, Lakoff and Johnson's book, Metaphors We Live By. Fascinating book if you're interested in philosophy of language and mental models and things like that. I highly recommend this one. And they point out that metaphors aren't just things we use to describe things, but rather they are pervasive, dominant paradigm setters in the way that we think about the world. So they're not just useful, you have to have them to live. And let's take one simple example here, and that's talking about arguments. You might describe an argument like a dance, right? There's a counterpoint, you move one way while your opponent moves the other, you sort of spin around each other trying to find some sort of equilibrium. But contrast that with arguments as war. So we set up our positions, we attack our opponent's positions, all sorts of things that you might throw out that have this more milit militaristic connotation. And of course, there's winners and losers. I think if you'll look on the YouTube spectrum out there about what happened in the latest, I don't know, uh, Jubilee debate, someone got annihilated, they got destroyed, right? This has this argument as war flavor to it. The way you're thinking about it at a particular time really has a strong influence on not only what you do, but how you feel about it. When we market something, when we brand it or rebrand it, a couple of implications I want to focus on. There's the aesthetic ones, right? Just is snow crab or tanner crab more exciting to hear? Which one do, what would I rather eat? We might use them to mislead people, right? In the case of the estate tax, we might not change anything about the policies, but just pick the term that we think is most likely to get the results that we want. And maybe that's by getting people to have the wrong impression about who end up paying a tax. Brands allow us to highlight certain values as shown in the pro-life versus pro-choice uh, descriptors in abortion. And they give us mental models, and these mental models maybe help us have more or less useful ideas. If you view an argument as a war, then that has you think about pairing your opponent's moves rather than thinking about moving in time with them so that you both look good. So now I think we're in a position to look through some alternatives. Artificial is the current leader in the clubhouse. We call it artificial intelligence. So let's start with that one, see what connotations does artificial have. And for me, the first thing that comes to mind when I hear artificial is artificial sweeteners. I think that's actually a really good metaphor for what's going on here. Historically, artificial sweeteners were viewed as amazing. They were technological marvels. They were maybe even cures for diabetes. You can find this with saccharin uh, or more recently aspartame. These ingredients were heralded as waves of the future. But that connotation hasn't always stuck. Now, when you say that something has artificial sweetener in it or artificial flavoring, it doesn't 
uh, engender support for it. In fact, quite the opposite. If I tell you that I have a food that is incredibly delicious with some artificial flavors in it, you might be a little more hesitant to consume that food. So the artificial label, I think, is interesting because now AI has, because it's artificial, it's new age and exciting. But I wonder if eventually it's going to take on more the artificial sweetener role where I don't want artificial intelligence, I want real intelligence. Another alternative, instead of calling it artificial intelligence, let's call it fake intelligence. Fake intelligence, like a nose and glasses or a pump fake, are more explicitly negative. They are meant to mislead somebody. They are meant to pull the wool over their eyes so that something else can happen that the person probably isn't interested in. You know, I wouldn't call up an AI company and say, you should start calling it fake intelligence instead. But as a consumer, maybe we should be thinking fake intelligence a little bit when we hear artificial intelligence. Sometimes it means they're not actually giving us intelligence. They're giving something that will just trick us. But I, I don't want to be tricked. Another example is counterfeits. Of course, counterfeit money, paintings, that's what comes to mind. It's sort of similar to fake here. A counterfeit is something that is supposed to look like the real deal in a very convincing manner, usually, in hopes of pulling the wool over someone's eyes and getting them to accept the money or accept the painting. And these are interesting too, because in some cases, you might think a counterfeit can be as good as the real thing. If I have a counterfeit painting and I just care about the aesthetics of the painting, looking at it and enjoying it, if I can't tell that something is a counterfeit or not, maybe that's good enough, right? Like I still get the aesthetic enjoyment out of it. It also has sort of like a political vibe to it. Yeah, this is probably a good term, but I wanted to, wanted to try it on. Synthetic. Looking for terms in this episode, uh, I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time, especially the artificial sweeteners portion. And then what kicked this off was for another video I'm doing upcoming on uh, um, John Hagelin's view of artificial intelligence. He thinks that synthetic might be an even better term. And I tend to agree with him. So when I think synthetic, I think about synthetic gems or synthetic motor oil. And these are things that, unlike counterfeits or fakes, are not meant to deceive anyone. But really, a synthetic diamond or synthetic motor oil is supposed to mean that it just wasn't mined from the earth in exactly the way that the others were. There's a naturally occurring thing, and the synthetic thing isn't the naturally occurring thing. It's a man-made version of that. But this human-made product should function just as well or nearly as well for our purposes. Maybe in the case of synthetic motor oil, it works even better if there's some other additives that makes your engine run smoothly. In the case of lab-grown diamonds, maybe they're better for ethical reasons. There's something compelling about synthetic products here that makes clear that it's not a naturally occurring thing, but it means that we've tried to get it right and model the thing or create a thing that is as good as the original or maybe better in some respects. Let's take a look at what we've got here. So names and branding matter, uh, but intelligence, instead of being artificial, well, it could be artificial, which has this uh, connotation of maybe being new and exciting technology, but also could go the route of artificial sweeteners and be derogatory. We use something like fake, which suggests that it's supposed to be deceiving us. Uh, and similarly, counterfeit, which has a more sophisticated deception associated with it. Or we could go with something like synthetic that says there is a real thing out there, but this synthetic intelligence is a man-made version that is supposed to be at least passable or maybe even better in some respects. Maybe there's another term out there. I mean, get your thesaurus out, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what other suggestions people have. But what I'd encourage you all to do is next time you hear something about artificial intelligence, stop and just say, what if that was about fake intelligence? Or what if that was about synthetic or counterfeit intelligence? Does that change the way that you feel about it? Is one of those strike you as more accurate or more reasonable? And if it does, uh, then maybe you should be worried that you're in one of those Frank Luntz situations where the marketers called it artificial intelligence to sort of pull on your emotional heartstrings and deceive you. I think the AI label is stuck and it's here to stay for quite a while, but uh, let's not be victims to the marketing. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you get a chance. Throw some comments down below. I've had quite a few lately, and I really enjoyed the discussion. Thanks, everybody.